Junie B. Jones and the Mushy Gushy Valentine. Written by Barbara Park. Illustrated by Denise Brunkus. Chapter One Party Ideas. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. I go to school in room nine. Room nine is where they have afternoon kindergarten. Also, they have morning kindergarten, only I am not familiar with that arrangement. Today at school, my teacher had an announcement to make. Announcement is the school word for listen to me and I mean it. My teacher's name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. told us that we were going to have a special day in room nine and it's called Valentine's Day. She said that Valentine's are special cards about friendship and all of us in room nine are going to give them to each other. My bestest friend, Lucille, squealed real happy. Oh, I love getting cards, teacher, she said. I especially love getting the kind with money in them. Money is my favorite kind of mail. Me too, Lucille, I said. Money is my favorite kind of mail, too. Plus, also, I enjoy publishers clearing house sweepstakes. Mrs. did a chuckle. Well, I'm sorry, girls. But I'm afraid there won't be any money in our valentines, she said. In room nine, we will just be sending happy wishes to each other. But it will still be lots of fun, she smiled. We will be making a special valentines box to hold all of the cards. And on the day of the party, I will personally deliver the cards to each one of you, she explained. Just then, I jumped right out of my chair because nobody even mentioned a party before. Hooray, I yelled. Hooray for parties. Can we have cake and donuts, missus? And what about cheese popcorn and cotton candy and pretzels and candy apples? I thought more. Plus, also, we'll need red licorice. And peanut butter cups, probably and chocolate-covered raisins, oh yeah, and malted milk balls, and gummy bears. I looked over at her. Maybe you should be writing this down. Maybe I should be writing. And peanut butter cups, probably, and chocolate-covered raisins, oh yeah, and malted milk balls, and gummy bears. I looked over at her. Maybe you should be writing this down, I said. Mrs. shook her head no. She said we would have cupcakes, punch, and candy hearts. I sat back down very disappointed. Because not much thought went into the menu, that's why. Lucille stood up. What kind of punch, teacher? She asked. Will it have fresh raspberries and strawberries floating in it? My nana's caterer always puts fresh raspberries and strawberries in our punch and it is delicious after that lucille twirled around in her fluffy dress and what about dancing i am learning ballroom dancing at my expensive dancing school and so i would be happy to teach the children who are cheaper than me mrs stared at lucille for a real long time how very generous of you she said finally but I don't think we'll be having ballroom dancing, Lucille. Jamal Hall waved his hand in the air. Then what about a puppet show? He asked. If we can't have dancing, can we have a puppet show? Yes, said a girl named Lenny. Or else maybe we could hire a magician. Or what about a wild animal act? Asked a boy named Roger. Like a grizzly bear or a sea lion. Just then, a boy named Polly Allen Puffer ran right to the front of the room and jumped up and down all over the place. No, wait, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, he shouted real excited. We could get some of those jugglers who juggle chainsaws. 
After that, Room 9 clapped and whistled and hooted and hollered. Because who doesn't love a chainsaw juggler? That's why. That's what I'd like to know. After we finished clapping, we looked at Mrs. Her head was on her desk and her eyes were staring out the door. Then all the children in Room 9 got very quiet because Mrs. was scaring us a little bit. Plus, also, we were out of party ideas. Chapter 2, Scribble Scraps. The next day, me and my bestest friend named Grace were playing on the playground. And guess what? We saw Mrs. carry a giant box into Room 9. It was the box we were going to decorate for Valentine's Day, I think. Wow, we wow, wow, that thing could hold a million billion Valentine's cards, I said real thrilled. That Grace did a frown at me. Stop saying Valentine, Junie B, she said. You keep on saying Valentine with an M sound, and you're supposed to say Valentine with an N sound. I did a frown back at her. Who said so? I asked. I said so, said that Grace. Didn't you hear my voice? I just got finished telling you. It has an N in it. The word is Valentine. I did a huffy breath at that girl. You are not the boss of my words, Grace, I said. This is a freed country, and I and if I want to say Valentine, I can, and I will not even go to jail. That Grace looked annoyed at with me. I didn't say you would go to jail, Junie B, she said. I just wish you would say the word correctly, that's all. Yeah, well, we can't always have what we wish for, Grace, I told her. I wish Valentine had an M in it, but it doesn't, does it? After that, me and that Grace made squinty eyes at each other. Plus, also, we crossed our arms and we tapped our angry feet. Only pretty soon we got tired of that because fighting with your friends is not real fun. And that's how come both of us hugged each other and we said apology. Sorry, Junie B, said Grace. Sorry, I tried to be the boss of your words. Sorry, Grace, I said back. Sorry, Valentine doesn't have an M in it. After that, both of us holded hands and we skipped all the way to room nine. That's called a victory skip. And guess what else? After we got to room nine, Mrs. said it was time to decorate the Valentine's box. Everybody quick sat us down in their seats. Then we... That is called a victory skip. And guess what else? After we got to room nine, Mrs. said it was time to decorate the Valentine's box. Everybody quick sat down in their seats. Then we watched Mrs. cover the box with shiny white paper. Plus also, she cut a mail slot into the top. After that, all the children got out their scissors and we cut paper into hearts and pasted it onto the sides. I cut mine fastest. Mrs. Look, look, I said. I am already done cutting my heart, and so I have the fastest scissors in room nine, probably. Just then, a meanie boy named Jim jumped up from his chair. No, you don't. Look over here. I already cut two hearts. See? One, two. Ha on you, he said. I quick cut another. Yeah, well, now I have two, too. And so, you are not the winner anymore, meanie Jim. Jim held up one more. Three, he yelled. I just cut number three, so I am still one ahead of you. So I made my scissors go speedy fast. Ha, now I have three too, so there, I said. Jim did a fast stop. Four, I'm up to four, he said. That's how come I got a frustration inside of me. Stop it, Jim. Stop cutting so fast, and I mean it. After that, I tried to cut one more heart, but my scissors went very out of control, and my heart turned into a scribble scraps. Darn it, now look what you made me do. I hollered real mad. All of a sudden, 
A big hand came flying over the top of my head, and it snatched my scissors right off my fingers. I bended my head back to see who it was. It was Mrs. I did a gulp. I was afraid it was you, I said kind of soft. Then Mrs. went to Jim's table, and she snatched his scissors too. And so... Me and Jim had to sit in our chairs for the rest of the day, and we didn't get to decorate the Valentine's box because our cutting days were over, that's why. And our pasting days never even got started. Chapter 3, Picking Out Valentines The Valentine's box turned out very beautiful. After it was finished, Mrs. passed out lists for us to take home the list had names on the of all the children in room nine there are 18 children in our class said mrs so that means that everyone needs to bring 18 valentines i raised my hand do we bring valentines for ourselves too i asked her well no she said I mean, there's no rule against it, I suppose, but valentines are really supposed to be given to others. So I thought, she thought for a second, oops, I guess that means I made a mistake, doesn't it? She said, since you won't be bringing in cards for yourselves, you will need to bring in 17 valentines. I raised my hand up again. Yeah, only what if we also want to bring valentines for you, missus? I asked. Mrs. raised up her eyebrows. Well, I think that we would be back up to 18 again, wouldn't you? She said, 17 plus 1 equals 18. I tapped on my chin. Yeah, only what if there's people in here who we don't actually like that much? Do we have to bring them a valentine too? She's, yes, Junie B., she said. Chapter 3, Picking Out Valentines The Valentine's box turned out very beautiful. After it was finished, Mrs. passed out lists for us to take home. The list had the names of all the children in room 9. There are 18 children in our class, said Mrs. So that means every one of you will needs to bring 18 valentines. I raised my hand. Do we bring valentines for ourselves too? I asked her. Well, no, she said. I mean, there's no rule against it, I suppose, but valentines are really supposed to be given to others. She thought for a second. Oops, I guess that means I made a mistake, doesn't it? She said. Since you won't be bringing in cards for yourselves, you will only need to bring in 17 valentines. I raised my hand again. Yeah, only what if... We also want to bring a valentine for you, missus, I asked. Missus raised up her eyebrow. Well, then, you would be back up to 18 again, wouldn't you? She said, 17 plus 1 equals 18. I tapped my chin. Yeah, only what if there's people in here who we don't actually like that much? Do we have to bring them a valentine too? Yes, Junie B., she said. Of course you do. Valentine's Day is a day for of friendship for everyone. So every single boy and girl in room nine will bring a card for every other boy and girl. After Mrs. finished explaining, she sat back down at her desk. I zoomed up there and whispered in her ear, yeah, only I know I have to bring cards to the regular boys and girls, I said real soft, but I don't have to bring cards to the big fat stinky heads, do I? All of a sudden, Mrs. throwed her arms up in the air. Yes, Junie B. Yes, you do, she said for the last time. You have to bring a card for everyone in room nine, even the big fat stinky heads. Just then, all of room nine looked at her, because teachers are not supposed to say big fat stinky heads, I think. After that, Mrs. closed her eyes for a real long time. Then finally, she stood up very slow, and she went to the sink and she took aspirin. The next day was Saturday, and it was the funnest Saturday ever, because Daddy took me to the drugstore, and he bought me a beautiful heart antennas for my head. Plus, also, he let me pick out my very own box of Valentines.
after we got home, mother helped me pick out the perfect cards for every person in room nine. First, I picked out a card for my bestest friend, Lucille. It was a lovely, it had a lovely princess on it. The next day was Saturday. And it was the funnest Saturday ever because daddy took me to the drugstore and he bought me beautiful heart antennas for my head. Plus, he also let me pick out my very own box of Valentine's. After we got home, mother helped me pick out the perfect cards for every person in room nine. First, I picked a card for my bestest friend, Lucille. It had a lovely princess on the front of it. This one, mother, I said. I will give Lucille this one, because when she grows up, she is going to marry an expensive prince, and she is going to let me and Grace sweep her castle. Plus, also, we'll get to wear her raggedy, used-up gowns. Mother looked at me. Lucille is a regular saint, she said, very quiet. I know it, I said. Me and Grace are lucky to have her. After that, I found the perfect card for Grace, too. It had two running shoes on the front of it. Mother, read me the words, it said. Valentine, you and I make a perfect pair. We do, Mother. Me and that Grace do make a perfect pair. Because Grace can beat me at running, and I can beat Grace at lots of other stuff, probably. Only I haven't actually found anything yet. After that, I picked out special cards for all of the other children in room nine. Every time I picked out a Valentine, mother crossed a name off the list. Finally, there was only one name left. Jim, said mother. You still need to pick a card for Jim. I did a big sigh, because I didn't want to give that guy one, of course. I looked all through my box of Valentines. Then all of a sudden, I saw a card with a funky skunk on the front. That one. I said, I will send Jim that one. Mother shook her head. I don't know, Junie B, she said. A picture of a skunk doesn't seem very nice. I put it in the envelope. Perfect, I said, because neither is Jim. Chapter 4, The Disagreement. On Monday, I skipped into room 9, very thrilled. Mrs., Mrs., look, I said. I have all my valentines for the big giant valentines box, and they're right here in this paper bag I am carrying. I run and showed her inside it. See them? See them, missus? I matched every single card to the exact person who will get it, I explained. Missus patted my head. She said the word good job. Then she took me by my hand, and she showed me how to put my valentines through the mail slot in the box. I do believe that you are the very first person in room nine to bring in their cards, said Mrs. I did a gasp at that exciting news. First, Mrs., I asked. I am really, really first. After that, I springed way high up in the air, and I ran all around in a circle. I have never been first at anything before, I said real squealy. Not ever, ever, never, and so... What is my prize for winning? I closed my eyes and held out my hands. Put it right in my hands, okay, missus? I won't even peek, I promise. After that, I stood there, real patient. But nothing got put in my hands. Finally, missus bended down next to my ear. Junie B, honey, I'm really sorry, but there is no prize, she said. We weren't actually having a contest. I opened my eyes. We weren't, I asked. She shook her head no. My shoulders slumped a teeny bit. So then a prize would be out of the question, probably, I said. Mrs. shrugged. I'm afraid I didn't buy any prizes, she said. After that, I rocked back and forth on my feet, and I thought and I thought. Would you have a mint in your drawer, maybe? Or some stickers, I asked. Mrs. smiled. Then she took me to her desk, and we looked in her drawer. How about a broken piece of chalk and a yellow rubber band? Mrs. asked. Sold, I said. After that, Mrs. told me congratulations and she gave me my prizes. I quick skipped to my table to show them to Lucille. She wrinkled up her nose. Yuck, have you been going through the trash again? She asked. No, silly, these are my prizes, I said. 
I got prizes for bringing in my valentines first. Lucille smoothed her dress. Yes, well, I would have brought my cards in today, but they're not back from the printers yet, she told me. What? I said. What printers? The printers where they print my name on the cards, she said. Wait till you see them, Junie B. Every card will have love and kisses from Lucille at the bottom of it. She hugged herself. They're so beautiful, she said. Each valentine has a cherry lollipop on the front of it, and the lollipop is in the shape of Cupid. <sighs> Cupid is the symbol of Valentine's Day, you know, she said. Of course I know, I said back. Plus also, skunks and shoes are symbols of Valentine's Day too, because that's what are on my cards. After that, me and Lucille did our lo our work till recess. Then both of us went outside to play with our bestest friend, Grace. Only too bad for us because Lucille kept on bragging about Valentine's Day and that's how come she and Grace got into a disagreement. I'm going to get more Valentines than anyone, bragged Lucille. That's because the boys love me better than any other girl in the class and they will bring me lots and lots of cards. Grace looked curious at her. But Mrs. said only bring one card for every boy and girl, remember? Not lots and lots. Lucille flounced her flouncy dress. Silly Grace, look at me, for goodness sake. I am precious, and when you're precious, boys automatically bring you lots of valentines. They just can't help themselves. She twirled all around. I am the cutest girl in room nine, Grace, she said, and I am way cuter than anyone else. She giggled and pointed, even you. After that, Grace did a little frown, because that hurt her feelings, I think. I tapped on Lucille. Yeah, only Grace is the nicest, Lucille, I said. And so maybe the boys will bring her lots of valentines, too. Lucille did a huffy breath at me. But I'm richer than Grace, Junie B., so that is another reason to bring me more, she said. I thought for a minute. Yes, but Grace can run faster, I said. So, said Lucille, my hair is longer, and boys like long hair. I looked at Grace's head. But Grace's hair is springier and curlier, I said, and that is cute as a button. Lucille made squinty eyes at me. But I have a big screen TV and a pool, she said real loud. That's how come me and Grace leaned our heads together and we got in a huggle. Finally, I looked up at Lucille. Okay, here's what we came up with. I said, Okay, here's what we came up with. I said, Grace can whistle through her teeth, plus she can wiggle her ears, and also, she can dribble a basketball through her legs while she's running. Lucille jumped up and down. But I have a pony, she hollered. I patted her very sympathetic. Sorry, I said real soft. Grace has a snake. After that, Lucille's shoulders got very sagging, and she sat down in the grass, because boys love snakes better than anything. Pretty soon, that Grace sat down next to Lucille, and she put her arm around Lucille shoulders and she patted her because guess what else grace is a good sport chapter five valentine's time valentine's day came on friday and guess what my grandma helen miller bought me a special valentine's outfit and it matched my heart and ten is very perfect that day at school, I skipped all around room nine, because I was a treat for the eyes, I tell you. Finally, I sat in my seat, and Mrs. took attendance. And guess what? Nobody was absent, because who wants to miss a party, that's why. After attendance, Mrs. put on a special Valentine's apron. It had big heart pockets in the front. And then Mrs. filled the heart pockets with Valentine's cards from the box, and delivered them to all the children. And wait till you hear this. 
The very first valentine was delivered to me, Junie B. Jones, and it said my name right on the envelope. Yahoo! I shouted, real thrilled. I am the first again, Mrs. Yahoo! Yahoo! After that, Mrs. kept on delivering cards until the whole valentine's box was empty. Then all of us got to open our cards, and it was as fun as a birthday party, I tell you. After Lucille finished opening her valentines, she called Grace to her table. Come on here, Grace. Come here and bring your valentines. Then you and I can count our cards and we'll see who got the most from the boys, she said. Grace came over. She smiled kind of nervous. Well, okay, here goes, she said. Then Grace pulled put all her valentines in front of me and Lucille, and she counted them one by one. Pretty soon, Grace wasn't smiling anymore. Rats! I knew I shouldn't have come over here, she said. Lucille grinned a teeny bit. Why, Grace? she asked. How many did you get? You have to tell me, Grace, how many? Grace did a big sigh. I only got seventeen, she said. I only got one card from every person, and that's all, no extras. Lucille's face lighted up very bright. She flipped her hair all around in the air. Gee, I am sorry to hear that, Grace, she said. Well, I suppose I should count mine now. After that, Lucille counted her cards in front of me and Grace. She counted them right out loud. Thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen. Then all of a sudden, Lucille stopped counting because there was only one more valentine left in her pile. That's why. She quick stood up at her seat and looked all around herself. First, she looked under the table. Then she looked on top of the, her chair and all over the floor. Also, she looked in her pockets and her backpack and her purse. Finally, she sat down real upset. I don't understand, she said. How could this be happening? Every day my nana tells me how special I am, but 17 valentines isn't special at all. 17 valentines is just the same as everybody else. I did a sigh. Huh, nanas, I said. You can't believe a word they say. Grace looked cheerier. Count yours, Junie B. Count your valentines and see if you got 17 like me and Lucille. Of course, I got 17, silly Grace, I told her. Everybody in this whole room got 17. It's the rule, remember? After that, I put all my cards in a pile and I counted them out loud, just like Lucille. I did a frown, then I counted them again. And even again, because guess what? Somebody broke the rule, that's what. I springed up on my chair. All right, people, who didn't send me a valentine and... Do not try to deny it, because I've only got 16 cards in my pile. I pointed my finger at Meanie Jim. Was it you, mister? Huh? You, the meanie head who didn't send me one? I looked all around. Or maybe it was you, Polly Allen Puffer. Or you, Charlotte, who I don't actually know your last name. Or you, Roger. Or then Miss, Mrs. swooped me off my chair. Do not stand on your chair, Junie B., she said, and please don't fight about valentines. If someone didn't send you a card, it was just a mistake. No one would do something like that on purpose. I'm sure of it. After that, I sat back down on my seat and I looked at that woman very curious because Mrs. is a nice teacher, but sometimes she just doesn't understand children at all. Chapter 6, Bingo. I put my head down on my table because I needed to figure out who didn't send me a valentine, that's why. I thinked and I thinked real hard, then all of a sudden I springed up. Lucille, I think of a plan. I think of how to find that guy. All I have to do is see the names of who signed my valentines, and whoever is missing is the person who didn't send me one. Lucille looked admiring at me. This is very smart of you, Junie B., she said. You should be on cops. I know it, I said back. My head is as sharp as a tack. After that, 
I got all my Valentines in a pile, and me and Lucille looked at the people who signed them. We kept track of their names. Very good. Only too bad for me, because seven of my Valentines weren't even signed. Darn it, I said. Now what am I supposed to do? Just then I saw Mrs. hurrying to my table again. Junie B., I have some good news for you, she said. Guess what? I just found at the bottom of the Valentine's box. I sat up real quick, because guessing games are my favorite, of course. A meatball, I said. Mrs. did a frown. No, Junie B., why would there be a meatball in the box? Think about it. What have people been putting in the Valentine's box all week? Valentine's cards? I said real smart. Right, she said. And how many Valentines did you get today? Sixteen, I told her. Yes, she said. You were missing one, weren't you? And so what do you think I found in the bottom of the box just now? This time, I thought my hardest. Uh, a meat paw, I said. Mrs. rolled her eyes up at the ceiling. Then I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. Finally, Mrs. pulled a giant envelope from behind her back. No, this, Junie B., she said. This is what I found in the bottom of the box. I found this big envelope, and it's addressed to you. My mouth came open very shocked. Then all of a sudden, I clapped my hands very thrilled. Hey, wait a second here. Maybe this could be my missing valentine. Mrs. looked funny at me. Bingo, she said kind of soft. Yes, I shouted, bingo, bingo, bingo. After that, I jumped up and down, and I danced all around, because nobody broke the rule after all, and that was very nice of them. After I finished dancing, I opened up the envelope, and it was the beautifulest card I had ever saw. It had lace hearts all over the front and a purple ribbon that was weaved around the edge. Look, Mrs., look, look. It's a mushy, gushy kind, I said. I always wanted one of those things. Who sent it, huh? Read me their name. Okay, who sent it? Who sent it? Mrs. opened up the card and looked at the name, and she laughed out loud. Well, 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 it looks like you've got yourself a fan, she said. She ruffled my hair. The card is signed from your secret admirer. I raised up my eyebrows. Huh? What? Who? Mrs. smiled. A secret admirer is someone who likes you very much but is too shy to tell you, she explained. I guess your Valentine's Day turned out pretty good after all, huh, she said. Yes, my Valentine's Day turned out almost perfect, I said. Now all I have to do is figure out who my secret admirer is and I will be in business. After that, I put my head down on my table and closed my eyes. I needed to think of another plan, of course. Chapter 7. Wink, wink. Another plan did not come easy. I thinked and I thinked for a real long time. Finally, I tapped on my bestest friend, Lucille. Want to help me, Lucille? I asked. Want to help me figure out my secret admirer? Lucille did mad eyes at me. Just because you have a secret admirer doesn't mean you're prettier than me, she said, very annoyed. I looked at, surprised at her. I never said I was prettiest, Lucille. I said it was just that someone in room nine loves me better than he loves you, and I keep on wondering who it is. Lucille leaned close to my face. It's a cuckoo head boy, that's who it is, she said. After that, she scooted her chair to the end of the table and she turned her head away from me I did a mad breath at that girl keep act keep acting like that and you'll be sweeping your own castle I said after that I looked all around room nine and guess who I saw I saw crybaby Williams that's who crybaby Williams sits right behind me and is the shyest guy I ever heard of and so maybe he might be my secret admirer I spinned around in my chair and waved at him. Hello, shy boy, I said, real cute. William looked nervous at me. What do you want, he said. I wrinkled up my nose, very darling. Yeah, only you don't even have to be shy of me anymore, William, because I think I know your secret, I said. After that, I put my chin on his t 
table, and I winked my eye at him. Only, I'm not actually good at winking, and so I have to say the words, wink, wink, William. I said, wink, 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 see my eye? See how it is trying to wink at you? William's face started to sweat. Turn around, please, he said. I did a giggle, because that admirer boy was shyer than I thought. You are a silly sausage, William, I said. Then I tried to tickle him under his chin, but William swatted my hand away. I tapped my fingers on the table. Okay, here's the thing, William. Swatting my hand away is not actually that admiring, so please do not do that again. After that, I tried to tickle his chin again. But this time, he ducked under the table. I did a frown, because something did not seem right here. Finally, I bended my head down and peeked at him. I'm going to take a wild guess here, William. You're not actually my secret admirer, are you? I asked. No, what said William. No, no, no. After that, I did a big sigh and turned my chair back to my own table. I looked all around the room nine again. And guess what boy I saw next? I saw Polly Allen Puffer, that's who. And he is always teasing me. And so maybe he's my secret admirer. I zoomed to his table speedy fast. Wink, wink, Polly Allen Puffer, I said. Wink, wink, wink. What's wrong with your eye, he said. I puckered up my lips and I blowed that guy a kiss. Thank you for the beautiful valentine, Paul, I said. Polly Allen Puffer looked strange at me. Paul? Who's Paul? What beautiful valentine? My valentine is, was the one with the oozy slime monster on the front of it, he said. Don't you remember it? Just then I made a face because I remembered it, of course. I hurried back to my seat again. That's when I saw a boy named Ham. And Ham hardly even knows me. And so he was worth a try, I think. I quick went to his table. Okay, Ham, I'm running out of patience here, so listen very careful. I faced my eyeball at him. Wink, wink, okay? Now, are you my secret admirer or not? And please tell me the truth, or you will be sorry. Ham sticked out his tongue at me, and he put his thumbs in his ears, and he flapped his hands up and down. All righty, I said. I'm going to take that as a no. After that, I went back to my table, and I sat down real frustrated. I put my head on my hands very glum, because guess what? Finding a secret admirer is not as easy as it sounds. Chapter 8. Who Knew? Pretty soon the bell rang for recess. I hurried over to my friend Grace because maybe she would help me find my secret admirer. Both of us skipped outside to the playground. Then all of a sudden I stopped real fast because I accidentally left my beautiful valentine on the table and I didn't want anyone to take that lovely thing. Wait, Grace. Wait right there. I'll be back in a jiffy, I said. After that, I ran my fastest back to room nine and guess what i spied that meanie jim at my table and he was picking up my beautiful card hey what do you think you're doing mister i yelled real loud then i zoomed to my table zippity quick and i yanked that card right out of his mitts and after that i started running to the door but meanie jim springed in front of me and he held up his hand stop he yelled don't take that valentine outside if you take it outside you'll get it dirty I made squinty eyes at that boy. No, I will not get it dirty, I said back. And anyway, this is not your beeswax, Jim. Jim stamped his foot. Yes, it is too, my my beeswax, Looney B. Jones, he yelled. That card costed me my whole allowance, and I don't want you to get dirt on it. As soon as he said it, he quick put his hands over his mouth. But I already heard his words. I did a gasp. (gasps) You, Jim? You're the one who brought me this card? I asked. Why? How come? Is this some kind of meanie boy joke? Jim started sputtering a real lot. Yes, I mean, no. I mean, uh, I mean, I didn't buy that card. It just looks like it costed a lot of money, that's all. And whoever bought it spent his whole allowance, I bet. 
I kept on staring at that boy. Because something smelled like fish here, that's why. If you're not the one who gave me the valentine, then how come you're acting so funny, Jim? I asked. And how come your words are all sputtery and nervous? And how come your face is all reddish and blotchish? Just then, Jim clunked himself in the head. Darn it, I knew I'd ruin it. I always ruin everything. Now everybody in room nine will know that I like you, and I want it, it to stay a secret, he said. All of a sudden, my whole face felt happy. You like me, Jim? You really, really like me? Because you never acted like you like me, and so since when did you like me? That's what I would like to know. Jim's face got a silly look on it. I've always liked you, he said real quick. I just act like I don't like you, so nobody else will know I like you. I looked confused at him. But if you like me, how come you always call me names? I asked. Jim shrugged his shoulders. Because you call me names, he said with... I did a big breath. Yes, Jim, I know I call you names, but that was because you started it first, I explained. No, I didn't, he said. You started it first. I shook my head. No, Jim, you did, I said. No, Junie B, you did, he said back. No, you did. No, you did. No, you. All of a sudden, Jim raised his hand in the air, and he waved it all around. I called on him. Jim, I said. Maybe we both started it, Junie B, he said. Maybe we both started calling each other names on the very same day. Just then, I started to smile, because that would be fair of us, I think. After that, I skipped around him in a happy circle, on account of this was a nice development. I grabbed his hand. Hey, Jim, let's go tell Mrs. that we're friends. Want to? Because she will... Get a kick out of this, probably, I said. But all of a sudden, Jim plopped down on the floor, and he wouldn't even budge. I started, I stared and stared at the top of his head. Okay, this doesn't actually seem like a good of a start for us, Jim, I said. He looked up at me. I know, he said, but I can't tell the teacher that I like you. I can't tell anyone. If I tell people, it will ruin everything. I wrinkled my eyebrows. Everything like what? I said. Like all my friends will know I like girls. And that will be embarrassing, he said. Plus room nine won't ever be the same again. I didn't understand. Why, Jim? Why won't it be the same again? I asked. Because it will be dull and boring, that's why. He said, because if you and I like each other, then I won't tease you anymore. And if I don't tease you, then you won't tease me back. And that means you won't shout silly, funny stuff at the, at the, because it will be dull and boring. That's why he said. Because if you and I like each other, then I won't tease you anymore. And if I don't tease you, then you won't tease me back. And that means you won't shout silly, funny stuff at me that makes people laugh. He rocked back and forth on his feet, very bashful. You make room nine sparky, he said, kind of quiet. After that, he smiled very cute, and he poked my arm with his finger and he made a sparky sound. Zzz, he said. Zzz, zzz. I laughed very loud and I sparked him back. Zzz, zzz, I said. And so guess what? Then me and that silly guy started chasing each other all over. Room nine. And we kept poking and sparking. And it was the funnest game I ever heard of. Only too bad for us because all of a sudden we heard a noise at the door. Oh no, it was Mrs. and she caught us in the room. Hey, what's going on here? She said, you two are supposed to be in the playground. Me and Jim stopped very fast and Jim looked nervous at me because he was afraid I would tell his secret, I think. All of a sudden I pointed to him kind of mad. It's his fault, Mrs., I said, because Jim poked me and made a sparky sound, and then I poked him back and made a sparky sound, too, only he wouldn't, he couldn't let 
that be the end of it. And pretty soon we were chasing each other and sparking and chasing and sparking and chasing. Only now you came into the door. And so the sparking and chasing are over apparently. And so we will just be on our way to the playground, I believe. I tapped on her. Pardon me while I get by. I said, very polite. Mrs. rolled her eyes way back in her head. Honestly, you two, it's Valentine's Day, she said. Can you get along for just one day? After that, she took us by our hands and she marched us outside. We waited for her to leave. Then he looked at me kind of shy. You did good, he said. Thank you for not telling my secret. I smiled at that nice boy. That's okay. Thank you for... My mushy, gushy valentine, I said back. After that, I faced my eyeball at him. Wink, wink, Jim, I said. Wink, wink, wink. And guess what? Jim pointed his eyeball right back at me, and he winked very perfect. After that, we runned off to play with our friends, or else people might think we liked each other, and that would ruin everything. That is how come I never ever told anybody about Jim's secret, not even my bestest friends, Lucille and Grace. Because Meanie Jim is the bestest secret admirer I ever had. And guess what else? Room 9 is still staying sparky. Zzz.